Hello, my dearest friends. How are you today? I'm very excited. Today is going to be an ad, but it's an ad for one of my favorite brands, and I still get butterflies knowing that I get to do this tutorial and use these products. So we're going to be using all Kevin Aquan today. I'm excited. Are you excited? You're excited. Also want to mention that tonight's post is also going to be an ad. You'll see that it's an ad. The first word will always be ad. Um, but it's something that I've been talking about and it's products that I've been showing you and the way to use them. I don't want to give too much away because it's a helpful video, but it involves bronzer and contour. Now I'm going to keep the eyes. I'm going to say I'm going to keep the eyes pretty subdued, but y'all know, y'all know that I go feral. It's, it just happens. I'm going to try my best. I'm going to start with this shade. We're going to pick that up on the E28. You saw how many times I just went into that. I talk about that because it's so important to remember how much we're picking up. So we can remember we went in one, two, three. Let's take that, start to press it into the eyeshadow base. See how nice and pigmented that is? That was just three little swipes. And a lot of you have been requesting Jean snores. Again, I went in one, two, three. Jean is back today and he's very sleepy, so you're gonna hear that. And I also want you to notice that I work, I'm, I'm working in sections. So right now there are six taps of the eyeshadow through here and through here. And I'm going to go in one, two, flip it towards the ceiling. See it there? So remember, that's going to face the ceiling. And that's actually just going to give us a little bit more control on this front part of the eye. It's a little bit harder to get the brush in there. But if we do it this way, we're just placing that brush right into the socket. See how easy that is? And I am pressing that back and forth and kind of twirling it. And it helps to hold the brush pretty far back when you do this. Now take the side, whatever's left, there shouldn't be much left. And then we'll just smooth it by tapping that top part. So pretty, look how smooth that shadow is. So it might seem tedious going in and counting how many times you're going into the shadow, but when you're just starting out and you're struggling and finding that your eyeshadow isn't matching, that is such a good technique because you'll realize you're not really going into that eyeshadow as many times as you think. I'm not digging in here a thousand times and I just keep going back. Um, in total, I think that was five times in there and then with whatever's left, I'm just tapping across to smooth. So it's just a really good way to kind of get started. I mean, even where I'm at, sometimes I still make sure I'm counting how many times I'm going in. I remember seeing just, you know, digging in here and loading up that brush. And I don't, I wouldn't remember how many times that I did that. So my eyeshadow was very uneven. So that's a really good tip. Now I'm going to take this shade and we're going to apply it two taps in. We're going to apply this on the brow bone. We're going to focus most of it there and then with what's left i'm just going to continue to smooth this top part out think of these lighter shades as your smoothing shade focus most of it on the brow bone because that's going to give the eye a little bit of lift and then from there press it over this way and over this way it just kind of melts all of the shadow together just going to make sure that this eyeshadow base this is the one that I always use. You can just check my recent saved highlights. Let's make sure it's nice and smoothed out. Then I'm gonna grab this shade. I am gonna load up the brush here. And the reason why is because we need to set this evenly and quickly across here. Ooh, isn't that nice? Look at that. And we're gonna get the most shimmering payoff because of that tacky base. So now I'm gonna take the tip of the brush and I'm just going to tap that shimmer and just kind of lightly melt it into our crease color. I don't really want it to come too far out of the fold here, but I do want it to look a little softer than a cut crease. Just gonna kind of push it into the color. Then we'll grab a little bit of this color. This one I am gonna monitor because I'm using it more as a shading color and I'm just going to press it here to fill in any gaps. Perfect. I'm going to go back in one, two, so that's four total. Perfect. Okay, so look at this. Okay, you see how sharpened that is? Let me do it on this side because I was testing that side. 
So let's just throw this on. Okay, do you see this now? Well, all we have to do is put it on here and then we just twist it back off and it sharpens itself in the lid. So cool. So just to make this a little bit easier, we're gonna grab this brown from that palette we've already used and let's just smudge this. Jean, mama's doing something very important. You do not need to be taking a bath. Now I am going to put on some falsies, but I'm going to grab the Volume Mascara from Kevin Aquan first. Roll that through. This one's actually really nice at getting close to the root because the brush is so tiny. We talked about that yesterday, I believe. It's really important. Rolling it through like this does help though. And then the wand is amazing for bottom lashes, which you'll see in a little while because it's so tiny. Now, because I am going to put on falsies, I didn't use this, but I do want to tell you that if I'm just doing mascara, this is my favorite lash curler of absolutely all time. I've used them all. You could name something, and I'm sure most of you will DM me and name a few. This one. It is so, so, so good. We're using the Etherealist foundation today, and I want to show you how effortlessly it's going to cover up my redness but it feels so lightweight. Y'all see me use this foundation quite a bit. So what you're seeing me do there is really just make sure that it's nice and even. And then from here, we're going to take it. Look at this. Look how quickly it covered up my redness. Now let's grab this shade again, this on a smaller brush, add a little bit of definition to the bottom lash line. Press that in, picking up the same amount for this side. Let's grab our mascara again. And we're gonna do our bottom lashes now. See how tiny that is? It fits in here so nicely. Ooh. And then I'll try to, this is much easier to do in a mirror, but what I like to do is I try to find the very tip of the of the lash and I'll just grab it and kind of wiggle it back and forth so we coat Jean Bean coat it and then try to find the very tip of the lash but do it in a mirror and not your phone now I have talked about this so many times I'm not going to go into full detail because I do want you to wait and watch the video but transitioning your bronzer, and this has a built-in transition. See how it goes from lightest to darkest? That's what we wanna do here, and this is, it's a guideline. So really quickly, what I like to do is I'm gonna grab the darkest shade first. There it is on the brush. That's gonna go right above. You see my natural contour, just so you can see before, I don't have any product. You can see my natural contour there. What I'll do is I go I guess halfway in it, about right there, that's where I start the bronzer, and then we start to build it up. We don't want the bronzer to go any farther than my natural contour, but we wanna start this transition. And I start with a small amount. I'm gonna tap in one more time to the darkest part. Always best to start with very small amounts. It's easier to build than it is to start over. Then next, we go into the middle shade, Two taps into that, we're gonna to start to go right above. I've talked about transitioning bronzer so many times. We talk about transi transitioning our eyeshadows, but we never talk about transitioning blush or transitioning bronzer. And it makes such a difference. We're gonna do two taps into the lightest and the sun naturally hits us on the high points of the face. So it's okay to take your bronzer up to right here. And look at how pretty and how smooth every single time. Look how pretty this blush is too. We even have a little bit of a bronzer moment in here. Um, today, I am just gonna grab the one in the center. I'm gonna teach you transitioning blush with this at a later date. But 
Ben's parents are actually going to be here very soon and they're visiting from out of town. So I'm gonna go visit with them. Ooh, that's pretty, let's add more. <laughs> I love blush. And for me, I still like to start my blush here and then I'll end it about right here. And I feel like it just gives a nice glow to the face. And I also feel like it gives a little bit of lift to the face as well because we're angling that blush upwards. So I did lip liner and now we're gonna go in with this. Look how pretty this is. Look at it. This is the Glass Glow Lip Prism Rose. Oh, it's gorgeous. And this blush and the skin and the bronzer. I feel, I feel pretty y'all. Wait, I almost forgot. Let's do inner corner highlight. We're gonna grab this shade. pretty. I'm going to link this palette. This is the light one again. This is the one that we've been using the entire time, but I'm going to link it here because it's so nice. All right, friends, that is the look for today. Look at how good my skin looks. That foundation, the bronzer transition. I don't, I don't even know where to start and to tell you what's my favorite, but I know that I absolutely love this look. I love you all so much. I'm going to set a reminder because I want you to watch tonight's post. It's about contouring with bronzing. It's a very helpful video. Um, anytime that I'm doing ads, I want to make sure that they're helpful. So I love you all so much. Make sure you click that reminder and I will see you in the comments tonight.